Greetings everyone, Eric here, and welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to do kind of a brickish, stonish wall, pixel arty thingy, tileable thing for your game. So let's get started. Okay, so I don't want to take up too much of your time, even though I'm probably going to end up rambling at some point and taking up a lot of your time. So basically what we're trying to do is we're going to make a simple, like, blocky thingy. Uh, we're probably going to make it 32 by 32, so let's just do this and do 32 by 32. That is basically just a size that I like to use. And what we're going to make is we're going to make a brick pattern for a 2D game, a 2D pixel art type game. And it's going to be something that you can tile. And what tile means is that you can lay it next to uh, a bunch of them in a row next to each other or above each other, and they will be seamless. You won't be able to tell where one starts and where the other one um, ends. Words like that. Uh, so let's zoom this in. This is our preview. Uh, I'm using the program A Sprite. You can get it on Steam for twenty dollars. And we're going to use. Uh, let's just use whatever default colors here, or we can pick a different color palette if we so choose, because I have the ability to do that. Uh, let's see. Is there any good color palettes? Um, let's see. We have the Commodore sixty four. Uh, let's see. We have, ooh, I always liked Edge thirty two. Yeah, let's use Edge thirty two. It's just got like a it's got a nice vibe to it that I dig. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, that should work. Okay, so we're going to use these ones. I'm going to make like kind of a gray pattern. And so what we want to do is we want to turn this blankness here into something that can be tiled. So what we're going to do is we're going to... I like to start with kind of a either the lighter tone or kind of a mid-tone. This will be our lightest tone. This will be our darkest tone. So we're going to like... Effectively, this is going to be our color palette. So I'm going to take our second lightest tone. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill this whole thing in. Then I'm going to go to the brush tool. And then let's go maybe one darker. Let's go with our darkest tone. And let's actually lay in effectively a stone or brick type pattern. Now, if you want to know what that is, yes, I'm watching YouTube. Shush. So if you look at uh, kind of a brick pattern, if I look one up here. This is what I mean by brick, brick patterns, things like these, where you have a bunch of bricks and stuff kind of laying down next to each other. Um, it can be as simple or as complicated as you would like. Uh, you can also look at like a uh, stone wall pattern. Let's see if I get what I wanted. Yep. So if you want something a little more uh, scattered or random, you can get stuff like that. Here's even a great example of kind of a cartoony looking thing. Um, but we're going to basically stick to kind of a brick pattern for now. So what I want to do first is I want to think, okay, how do I want to divide this? Now, that's going to depend on how I want it to tile. What I usually do is I have the top up part up here blank. And I'm going to start with just a line right here. When this tiles, this will be the top piece for up here. Um, and I'll also show you some other pieces later. So right now we're just kind of setting up our basics. Now... Let's see, how wide do I want these? Well, I guess that depends on how many divisions I want. <laughs> okay, so what I did was I actually put a grid that is uh, 16 by 16. So you can see this is one block, this is one block, this is one block, this is one block. Uh, it usually helps me sometimes to break things down even further. Um, because depending on how your game's running, uh, you might go 16 by 16. In which case I would say go like one, two, three, like go three by three, which is what I started out as for this. And then I just erased half of them. So that's kind of our first set of lines. Now we need to do the other part of the brick pattern, which is going to be the middle-esque lines. So these uh, these bricks are going to be pretty big. So let's just kind of start here. And for a brick pattern, you basically go every other one like that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to divide, instead of dividing here, you're going to divide here and here. The problem is finding the offset that you like. So I'm going to just make a wild guess on where the uh, offset's going to be. And then if I'm wrong, I can just try again. Okay, so I got that pattern to finally work. <laughs> it took me a second. So this is uh, 15 wide by 17 tall. Um, and then I made sure that this and this add up to the same amount. Now, I didn't check this. But it should be fine. If we want to check to see how it's tiling, what I can do is, yeah, right here. So we have tile mode. So you can do it in either the X, the Y, or both axes. So if I click that on, you will see what that's doing. 
basically it is tiling everything so that we can see kind of what it's doing. And then by zooming out here, you can kind of see what's going on. Now here you can clearly see that uh, we need another division probably around there to get some of this to work a little bit. And the best thing is, is it updates on everything because it's tiling. And there you can see how it works. So that's what's tiling, uh, what tiling does is it creates this kind of an effect. Although I'm not sure why this is, uh, that bothers me in a weird way, but it's fine. It is whatever. It's not so bad that I'm going to, uh, I swear I know what I'm doing. It's just trial and error. Yeah, that looks fine. So we have this set up now. The main one is this uh, middle one. So the only one you have to actually worry about is the middle one, which uh, we can turn the tile mode off so that we can only see the middle one. And that's basically like kind of your starting point. This is your base. This is what tiles. Um, so you might, you gotta have to like play around with it until you find what works, <laughs> until you find like a pattern that works really well. But since we now have that, what we can do now is because we have our base color here and then we have our darkest color, we have multiple colors for two different types of shading. So if you want, you can dual shade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a direction for the light to come, which I usually always typically, typically, I can't speak, typically choose the top left coming down to the right. So all the shadows will be on the bottom right sides of things. So we're going to go with the darkest shade first, and we're going to kind of do that, that. I don't want them to look perfectly the same, so I am going to kind of stagger these a little bit. Otherwise, they'll look a bit too samey, and you don't want that to happen. So already you can see that that's adding a little bit of depth, um, but we're going to add even more depth by adding a secondary color. This gives you a little bit of transition. So this gives you some depth. And then now we're going to add effectively the main bit of shading just to add that extra little bit of flair. So again, you want to pick a spot, like I said, pick a direction to work with and just work from there and add little bits of like something in there every now and then just kind of add a little bit of flair, but try not to get too crazy with it. You don't really need to um, just do what feels right and what looks good to you. Okay, and then to add just a little bit extra flair, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little highlight up here. So just something super simple, nothing crazy. I'm just gonna add little bits of highlights in some of these little spots to give you that little extra detail. Um, so definitely, you know, think about doing this. Now we've done a lot here. And normally what I would suggest is to don't do too much all at once, like I just did. Uh, do a little bit and then check the tiling to see if you like the way it looks. Then do a little more, check the tiling. But as I am ever so confident, and by ever so confident, I mean I am just trying to do this as quick as possible. I'm gonna check now after I've done so much extra work. Woo, okay, and we're also gonna turn off that bloody grid. And there we have it, oh, good golly. That actually looks really nice. I'm actually really happy with how that came out. <laughs> Even though I just kind of threw that together really quickly. <clears throat> now, you're probably sitting here going, all right, so this is great for tiling, but obviously some of these edge pieces could use a little bit of work because as you get up here in the tiling area, when it tiles to the top corner, that looks, you know, meh. That looks kind of meh. Uh, well, actually that looks fine, but then that looks kind of meh. That looks kind of meh. There's a lot of little meh things here going on that you're just going to sit there and go, hmm, I wish I could do a little bit more. So what we're going to do to, oh man, that is trippy to watch that happen. Uh, I'm distracted. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take that one tile and we're going to give it the pieces that go around it, meaning the, the t uh, four corners and then the four side bits. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create the more things. So what I need to do here, of course, is I need to create a much larger canvas. So we're gonna expand the canvas and we're going to do something that A-Sprites allows me to do, which is freaking great, is I'm just going to go, let's see, 32 times three. And I'm just gonna go 32 times three. That way I don't have to do math. 
<laughs> I know, I'm absolutely great. All right, let's turn the grid back on. I Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take these pieces here. We're going to copy them. And we're going to effectively fill this entire thingy. There we go. Now we have this entire thingy all filled. And I'm going to zoom out here. So what we want to do now is we want to make it so that these four corners and the tops or the, the top, bottom and the two sides actually look like end pieces. <laughs> and in order to do that, oh, my voice cracked. In order to do that, we are effectively going to start 32 by 32 so I can actually see where my bounding boxes are because I'm visually losing things because of color. We are going to now go in and we're going to draw the different pieces. So let's start with this top piece. So obviously this whole top is going to have to be a little different because it needs to have a ceiling piece. Um, now, it also depends on what you're going to be using this for, obviously. So depending on how you're going to be using it, you might not need to do this. But the simplest way to do this kind of thing is to literally just add um, your border color all along the edges. Now, right away, you can just call that done. Like, that's it. That's all you need to do. But if you just want to touch things up just a wee bit, you can then come in here and maybe add a little bit of detail so that these kind of look slightly more unique or that these like corner pieces don't just look like the exact copy paste thing that you were just working with. So I'm going to go into each of the corners and just add just a little bit of detail to make this thing look even better. And just like that, with not even a whole lot of extra work, I now have all the edge pieces as well as my main middle piece. And now you're probably wondering, well, okay, well, what's a good way of using this kind of setup? And you can use this to basically create walls um, for your game. Now, this works really well for like RPG type games. Um, uh, you can use it for side scrollers and platformers as well. But the cool thing is you can actually kind of use this a little bit for auto tiles. Um, now, what are auto tiles? Well, that's a whole nother uh, subject. <laughs> but if you would like to see what this looks like, I'm just going to fire up Godot real quick and just kind of make a blank screen, uh, scene so that you can see this in action. Okay, so here we are in Godot or Godot or whatever the heck they uh, call this kind of program. I believe the official title is Godot. Um, I've always said Godot for some freaking reason. Anyway, this is a completely open sourced game engine. I highly recommend it, especially if you want to do 2D games. This thing excels at it. It can also do 3D. As you can see here, it does do 3D and it can do a lot of cool stuff, which is really awesome. But we're only focused about the 2D. Um, it has its own scripting language, or I believe you can use C Sharp. <clears throat> But, um, and it also has its own visual scripting language, but I am getting over the board. I will leave a link for this if you guys want to check this out. But what we're looking at here is how our brick looks. As you can see here, I imported it as an auto tile. Um, if you're wondering what an auto tile is, that's an auto tile. As you can see here, if I turn the grid off, it automatically chooses what the edges are and what the inner part is. So it's choosing uh, based on the inner piece. Like if I click that and... I swear, sometimes this thing wigs the frick out if I do something weird. But as you can see, if I just click, it doesn't really know what to choose because I never defined a single tile. So it's just going to choose that for now, which is like the top corner. Um, but as you can see here, as I keep adding, it eventually automatically switches to the tiles we want, which is perfectly fine. That's what we want. But as you can see here, it tiles flawlessly. And if we want to see this in game, I think I can actually just do this. Let me select boop as our main thing. And as you can see there, our tile looks perfectly fine. You go away, you piece of garbo. But everything looks really good. Also, I just realized what I did there. <laughs> but anyway, this allows you to see kind of what we're working with. Now, if I wanted to get even more in depth, I do actually have like probably more types of tiles and stuff like here is um let's see where is one that i've made recently 
to show you a slightly more advanced version of uh, auto tiling, this is a tile I've made. <laughs> this is a uh, dirt ground auto tile that I had made. Um, and basically, yeah, this is insanity. <laughs> These are all, this is basically what we just worked on, which is this part. These are all the other variations. And the reason I made it this way is because the um, engine over here, Godot, will actually allow things like that for auto tiling so that no matter what type of path I make, it can use the path, which is really, really, really cool. But as you can see here, how easy it is, like I only did this because it's just the quickest way to jump in and just, you got something to work with. Um, but you can do that with anything, even like any other types of tiles you want to work with. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you something very quick. If there's anything specific you would like me to show you how to do, for instance, how to do, oh, no, stay here, how to do stuff like this, please let me know and I would be more than happy to show you how to do more of these advanced auto tiles, um, which actually does take advantage of a whole nother uh, program, which I don't have currently running or I don't have currently installed. But um, I used another program to help me do this part. But anyway, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you have any content, like I said, that you would like to see me do, please leave it down in the comments below, as well as what you thought of this kind of artwork stuff. Um, yeah, if you guys are making any games, please let me know. Uh, I would love to see that kind of content. Uh, there is a Discord, so definitely check out my Discord, and you can share your artwork, you can share your game development progress, all that stuff. There's also other links down below that you can check out. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Later.